we're now joined by Juan Pablo Montoya, who will be joining 2311 Racing this weekend here at Watkins Glen in the number 50 Toyota. Juan Pablo, what's it like to be back? Uh, it's really good to be back. Exciting. Um, I have no idea what to expect, so I don't know. I, I, like, I, th I think I should run pretty good, but that's bad I could tell you right now. <laughs> no, it, it's so difficult because, you know, you're coming to a weekend where you get... You know, I drove the car in VAR, I did about 40 laps in the, in the morning just, you know I mean, just to get comfortable, make sure the seat, everything was working. And I felt pretty good with the car. I actually felt it was easier to drive than the last car. And then, you know, you talk to uh, our teammates and the teammates go, oh, it's so difficult to drive. I go, okay. And then you talk to McDowell and McDowell goes, no, it's much easier. It drives more like a GT3 car. And I'm like, oh, that's what I thought. And then you talk to Pappies and he goes, so I don't, I don't know. I'm just going to go out there and go. It's either going to be, oh, it's not too bad or I'm going to go, oh, shit, you know, but we'll see. All right, we'll open up to questions. We'll start up front with Holly and then go to Bob. Welcome back. Thank you. Holly Kane with the uh, NASCAR Wire Service. Not only, I mean, it's been several years since you've been in this car, but also the people that you're racing around, it's a whole lot of new people. What has yes. that been like to get acclimated to who you're racing around this time? Um, honestly, being a one-off, it, it's kind of irrelevant. You know what I mean? I, I want to try to have a, a clean day and a good day and try to be competitive. If somebody's quicker, they're quicker. If, they, if you're quicker, you're going to try to go by and... You know, try to keep keep as simple as possible, uh, but you know, I mean, you never know. You know, if, if everybody raises the hell out of you, then you're gonna raise the hell out of everybody, and you know, I have no issues with that either. So. And the other thing I wanted to ask you is, two years ago, would you have expected that you were gonna be in another NASCAR Cup Series race? Just if you could maybe no. talk about uh, being here and and how it kind of came about. Um. Honestly, last year I was just racing, the last few years I was racing P2 cars for a while. And, you know, I ran WEC, ELMS, IMSA, I've done a bit of everything. And um, the, the bronze that we raced with decided he wanted to, to stop or for a little bit. And, I mean, honestly, for me it was fun because it's like racing with no commitments. Like, we, we went to the track, we... You know, we, we stayed always in the same hotel, had dinner, go to the trucks when it, when the bronze wants to go to the track. So you get to the track like 40 minutes before you run. And and you still drive the hell out of it and you still do the whole work. But there's no sponsor's commitment. There's no BS around the racing. You just go there, drive the car, go home. You know what I mean? It's it's really nice. Uh, so when he stopped, I, I really wanted to focus on Sebastian, you know, that we do, you know, we did F3 this year and the plan, you know, we're trying to figure out next year, but the plan hopefully would be F2. And, and that's it, you know, and Loletta called me earlier this year around the USGP in Miami and a little before that. And he said, hey, would you be interested in doing this? And I said, yeah, I would. I thought it'd be cool. It's, it's kind of funny because... You would ask me last year, I said, oh, no way. And then when the idea comes, I go, huh. And I, I, I honestly, I think it's pretty cool. The idea behind it was really cool. The cars are very competitive. And um, why not? You know what I mean? It's, I really don't have a reason not to do it, to be honest with you. I've, I feel I can, I can still do a good job. Uh, this year I wasn't racing full time, but I do a lot of karting, a lot of shifted karts with my kid, and I'm still involved in racing fully. So, I mean, just drive the car. If the car is good, you're gonna look good. If it's bad, you're gonna look bad. You know what I mean? It's like it's. it's I, don't, I don't think the car is bad. It's whether I can. I'm comfortable in it or not. Um, I told the guys I'd be surprised if we qualified really well. Like I, I should qualify pretty decent, but. I mean, when I won here, I didn't even put it on pole when I used to win here. I don't finish in the top five, I don't know how many times in a cup race here. And, you know, it's to qualify 12th to 15th. So, how, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll go to Bob and then Dan. Uh, Bob Parker's Fox Sports. What is, what feels like going to be the most different from when you last drove and cup and i'm not really talking about the car but just the way you, like i'm thinking you've never been through a choose are there other things that you're like man this is going to be really new to me um i think the new thing and i'm kind of lucky that they gave us two practices 
But I think that's the hard thing. It, the hard thing is you're going to go out and they want to see the tire decks. So we're going to, you know, you're going to go out and do a long run. You're never really going to do a qualifying sim or anything. Like back in the day, you used to do a qualifying sim. Like you really prepare for qualifying. And, and now we just go there and, and drive it. And, you know, the, with the tire deck they're talking about, you're probably going to get a lap. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, it's kind of tough because it's, if you overdo it, you screw up. And if you underdo it, you screw up. So, great. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Snippy, um, you, you, 10 years out now, how do you look back at your NASCAR career and, and how do you judge your, your run here? I thought it was pretty good, honestly, for the car I was in and the equipment we were in. I think we, in a lot of years, a couple of years, were not great, but you know, we made the chase, we fought for the championship, we we did things with a lot, a lot less than the other teams, I think, personally speaking. Um, I think our, my best run was with, you know, with Brian, when Brian was there and he was taking care of everything. When the new crew chief came in, it was honestly, it, until I left, it was a bit of a joke. But what can you do? Do you feel this will open the door to more one-offs or, or do you think this is? I don't know. Um, <laughs> this, this, do this weekend and and then we'll see uh, honestly I, I i probably somebody would come and say hey you want to do this again i would probably say yes but um, it's saturday morning so we'll see but yeah okay let's go to lee next lee spencer sirius x of nasco radio and catchfriends.com so what is your workout routine now and how does it compare to when you were driving when i was driving i didn't do anything i go to the gym now it's the truth. You know, we're racing every week. I I go to the gym every time I'm at home. I go for like an hour and a half every morning in the gym. And I and I do a lot of shifter cards. The shifter car is a killer. I mean, I mean that thing will tear you apart and, 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 and it's good fun, you know. And, and I, I mean, I do, I play golf a lot, walking, and I do quite a bit. You know what I mean? It's... I'm always been a big guy, and I'm always gonna. You know what I mean? It's like I'm not 25, and I, when I was 25, everybody said I was big. So what do you expect at 48? <laughs> Come on, get a life. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so ran into you and Sebastian yesterday, and I, I'm I'm kind of curious um, when you see what he's doing, and he he said F2 is kind of like on the radar. When you see how you've helped prepare him to take those steps, and then a kid like Connor Zillage, who has gone and won Trophy Cup and, and done the carding things in Europe that most of the American kids don't do, what do you think is the next progression for these kids that want to take perhaps an F1 path? Because most of the American kids, that those doors really aren't open to them. So Connor is interesting because Connor raced against Sebastian the last year or two of karting. So we on, we used to run mainly in Europe and then in the winter series or whatever it was called in my, in Florida we used to run against him and they used to always run together. So it was it was good. Uh, I think Connor went couple. I don't know if I think he went a couple of times to Europe and, and Europe is a different animal. Europe is a different animal and it's a different animal because a very different driving style. So what you drive in the states in a go kart, you go there and you struggle because the engine is very different and the approach is very different and the grip level is very different. So it's, it's just a different animal. Uh, he did he win? He won the trophy cup. Yeah, but that's not, that's not FIA. You know what I mean? That's, you know what I mean? It, it, it's, if you go and race IAMI or race uh, Rotax or race, that's not, that's not it. That's like saying you run ARCA and, and, and you call it you won in cup. It's, it's, yeah, it's good. I mean, the kid is good and you, you see what he's done. Uh, he, he, and he probably, if he would have stayed in Europe, he probably had the progression to be where Sebastian and what we're doing with Sebastian. Um, but uh, I think he's managed by Harvick. So they decided to come this route and, and you see how good he is. Um, the thing in Europe, most of the kids in Europe are that good. Like if you go to an F3 race and a two minute lap time, 70% of the grid, it's in within three tenths. You look at qualifying right now in, in Xfinity, it's, you know, seven tenths to the top five or six tenths for the top five. 
uh, six tenths, you've set 90% of the F3 grid in a double the length of a racetrack. That close it is. You know what I mean? That's the reality of it. It's it's very difficult, and you get less running than here. In 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 a, like F3 weekend, you get about four push laps in practice and two or three push laps in qualifying, and that's the weekend. So you need to come really well prepared. That it's. That's why everybody that comes from F2, F3 to IndyCar performs well, because they're used to perform under pressure. We'll go to Davey and then Dustin Albino. Hi, Juan. Davey Siegel with Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. How often do you and, and Sebastian watch NASCAR racing nowadays? Is that something you still follow? I'll be honest with you, in my house, the person that watched the most racing is my wife. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I watch, some of the F1 races. Actually, I'm doing a podcast now in, in Colombia for racing, so I watch most, like, I need to watch all the F1 races. Um, I watch, follow a little bit of the NASCAR races. I honestly, like, for this, I focus more on this race. I focus more, uh, the team did a tire test here, so look what they were doing. I did sim work, I did everything, you know what I mean? Everybody I talk to is says that the give and take they used to be back in the day is a lot less. People seem to race more for every position, uh, but it's what it is. See, I mean, I think if you have three, four seconds of tire deck, if you race, somebody starts racing, they're going to blow the tires off, so knock themselves out, you know what I mean? I'm okay with that. Daniel Suarez was just in here before you, and he was speaking about the diversity that's throughout the garage, mechanics, drivers, etc. I know it's been a minute since you've been here and you haven't really been able to see everybody and everything, but have you noticed a difference in terms of the people and the makeup of the garage since you left? Um, yes, I guess it's the correct answer. I don't know. I don't honestly, back in the day you had plenty of diversity. You have like, it hasn't really in my, for my, it hasn't really changed. I think the biggest change is you're going to go and race in Mexico next year. And that you're willing to explore more of that. And I think it's good because I think where you're going to see more diversity, apart from the garage, is going to be the crowd watching the races. And I think that's, that's going to grow the, the sport to a brand new market that is quite interesting. And I think the sponsors, you know, as, as a big, you know, Latino market and everything is in the States nowadays, I think that's going to help a lot. And especially bring new sponsors to the championship. Go to Dustin and then Marisol. Dustin, I'll be on NASCAR.com right here, Juan. Um, in the decade away, you had a lot of success. But coming back now, like, had, were there any prior opportunities before this one with 2311? Um, not really. I think the main reason this opportunity, the two reasons this opportunity came about, one is, uh, you know, Steve Laletta was the president at Ganassi when I was there. Uh, for one and two is I raced for Mobile One. You know, what I mean, I raced with McLaren in with Mobile One, and I actually my first sponsor in Colombia was Mobile One too. So. Hola, um, soy Marisol Hernández de el medio de comunicación CMO Latino, y quería hacerte la pregunta en español porque quiero que nuestra audiencia sepa y oiga de ti en nuestro propio idioma. Um, no te voy a hacer preguntas de la carrera ni de tu historia, pero bienvenido una vez más después de estos 10 años. Y uh, explícanos a nosotros qué significa mañana comienza el principio del mes de la herencia hispana y como hispano o latino en esta, en esta área, de esta industria, ¿qué significa eso para ti? Bueno, la verdad... Es, es muy chévere poder estar acá. Eh, yo cuando corrí para Target, yo, me acuerdo que tuvimos un carro de, del mes de la hispanidad y todo, un, un paint scheme especial y fue, pues la verdad fue muy especial y, y la verdad yo ya llevo los últimos tres años viviendo en Europa, entonces ya no sigo tanto lo que pasa acá, eh, pero estando acá y representando la verdad a, a todos los latinos y a toda la gente que me apoya. Uh -huh. eh, explicaste un momentito antes la pregunta que te hicieron antes que yo que tú no has visto diferencia en los latinos aquí porque tú siempre has reconocido esas personas en tu en, en, en el PID en las diferentes áreas um, dinos un poquito más acerca de eso y por qué tú siempre has notado los latinos en esta área ah, pues es que yo creo que Latinos siempre han habido, siempre han habido, la verdad, siempre han estado involucrados, siempre, pues conmigo trabajaba gente así y todo, entonces, 
siempre hay mucha gente de descenso colombiano, mexicano, argentino, hay de todo, ¿sí me entiende? Entonces, la verdad, yo, para mí personalmente, lo que me importa más que todo es que la gente haga un buen trabajo, de dónde son o cómo son, es irrelevante. Sí, y um, sé que tu hijo está también corriendo, felicidades, Gracias. o... Mi, 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 ¿Cómo se dice? Mi pésame. No sé cómo te sientes como padre que tu hijo esté en la misma industria que tú. Um, ¿Cómo lo apoyas y qué significa para ti que tu hijo también esté siguiendo tus pasos? No, la verdad, muy contento. Es lo que él quiere hacer y desde que él lo quiera hacer lo vamos a apoyar en todo lo posible y, y ya, la verdad, hemos trabajado muy duro, hemos progresado mucho, ha mejorado mucho, entonces muy contento con cómo van las cosas. Sí. Nosotros siempre te hemos seguido y um, como latinos hemos tenido mucho orgullo de tenerte como parte de esta industria. Felicidades y esperamos que puedas llegar a un puesto bastante alto igual que a Suárez. Listo, muchas gracias. Hey, we're going to take two more questions. We'll go to Daniel McFadden and we'll finish with Rick. Uh, Daniel McFadden, FrenchTrish.com. Uh, one, uh, you mentioned earlier, if someone's going to race the, the hell out of you, you're going to race the hell out of them. Uh, William Byron was in here earlier, and uh, he, he said, uh, ho hopefully, he said this playfully. He said, he said ho hopefully, he's uh, nice and respectful of the playoff guys. And I, I was, I'll be nice and respectful of everybody that is nice and respectful with me. It's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it's, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, honestly, I don't want to get in a pissing contest with anybody. I want to run well. If I get to you and I'm quicker than you, I'm going to try to pass you. And... And if you're quicker than me and you get there, um, there's no reason. Race is long enough, you know what I mean? Then you, like always, wait for the adjustment, make the car better. If you make somebody miserable earlier in the race, they're going to return the favor later. So just, I know, I know I'm doing one off, but uh, I'll be respectful of everybody that is respectful with me. It's not that hard. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Rick Huey, Finger Lakes Local Media. Uh, one. I remember you here with the Barbershop Pro Series way back in the day. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, <laughs> your uh, driver coach back then, Pete Arkensinger, who is the son of Cameron Arkensinger, who started racing here in Watkins Glen? Oh, my God. Yeah, I think probably half of the grid wasn't even born then. This was, what, 94? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. You know, I knew Peter. He was one of the coaches at, at Barbershop, and he was a really nice guy. So he was... You know, I mean, he was always there working with all the drivers, and, and he was really cool. You know, it was him. It was um, Wilson. What's his name? Oh, I don't remember his first name. He's actually helping Checo right now in F1. And uh, there were a few guys, and, and it's really cool. You know what I mean? I, even, honestly, even sometimes I, text, I receive texts from my mechanic from Barbershop. So it's pretty awesome. <laughs> 